when you go to somebody's house, you never go empty handed. It's funny because I did that at university and my friends thought like, why is this girl so weird? Because in university, when you go to people's dorm rooms for the first time, I don't think anybody brings, you know, a nice box of Ferrero Rocher. Uh, but I took that to my friend's dorm for the first time and she just thought, wow, this is the nicest girl ever. Hi guys, what's up and welcome to this week's video. So this week's video is about a show that recently came out. I think it came out in April of this year and it's called Never Have I Ever. It's the first mainstream show that I've seen where the lead character is a brown girl, so she's Indian. Now, I'm not Indian, I'm from Pakistan, but I mean, it's pretty similar because we used to be one country. I'm not really sure why we split. I think we would have been stronger together. I finished the show a couple of days ago. I didn't binge watch it, uh, mainly because I feel like I'm wasting my time if I binge watch things. So I try not to get too hooked. Um, I've just turned that part of my brain off, even though it doesn't work all the time. Overall, I think it was a good show. There is a strong storyline throughout the whole show. Each character was quite well developed and quite believable. I really liked all of them, especially the English teacher. I thought he was basically the exact copy of real life English teachers who are so enthusiastic about teaching English. Davy, for example, I thought her character, it was quite relatable because of course she was Indian, going to all those Indian events. One thing I quite liked was the theme came up where you don't feel Indian enough. Now, I'm gonna use Indian for that example, even though I'm not Indian. Not feeling American, and also I'm not American, I'm from the UK, so... But yeah, not feeling like you're from your own country and not feeling like you belong to that country where you currently live. So there's always this identity crisis. That's something that you genuinely go through when you're partaking in a completely different culture. You're not fully into that culture because you also belong to another culture. But then my solution to that is that you're just a mix. It's like, for example, if you're mixed race, then you're just a mix of everything. So it's a new kind of uh, culture. You don't have to be one or the other. You're just a combination of both. And that's a new thing in itself. So yeah, I could relate to her character a lot. One thing that I didn't really, I thought was a bit exaggerated was, how do I put this, was her desire to be really sexual with the guys. Like, I get it that as a teen, you know, hormones and you're going through stuff. But I think if you come from an Asian background, like Indian, Pakistani, Bangladesh, you are slightly less open and you are a bit more reserved about this kind of stuff. Now, of course, I'm not generalizing everyone, but that tends to be the case. So I thought it was very unbelievable that she would go to the guy that she really liked and just say, can I, you know, do it with you? I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's just very hard to believe. And especially if you genuinely like someone in high school, you wouldn't be able to be so upfront and direct. But maybe I just approach things differently. The other characters of her friends, for example, Eleanor and what was the other girl's name? Eleanor, Davy, and Fabiola, Fabiola. So firstly, Fabiola being from an LGBT background, love the representation because in high school, you know, not everybody is the same and people are going through their own stuff. Whatever feelings she was going through and coming out to her parents, that was very well shown. Also, Eleanor's character was also quite hilarious when she wanted to become an accountant and a boring beige person. There were lots of laugh out loud moments in this entire show, which I really enjoyed. I also read some trivia about the show. The fact that Davy couldn't use her legs after her dad died suddenly, that was actually um, inspired from her own experience, or actually it was the co-writer. I mean, that's something new and interesting. Now, I know there's this whole Team Ben or Team Paxton. I think Team Ben 100% because they have so much more in common, Davy and Ben. It just makes more sense. And even when she liked Paxton, she only really liked him for his looks. So they didn't spend as much time together to kind of build that emotional connection. I think in the long term, probably it would work out better with somebody like Ben because they have similar aims, similar goals. The one thing which I think could have been developed better was the relationship between Davy's mum and Davy. So they have this ongoing tension building up throughout the first, I think, eight episodes of the show. Um, and then her mum breaks to her that we're moving to India. But then it's just resolved in like the last scene of, of the season. I think they should have given it a bit more time. And also 10 episodes is quite short for an entire season. So I would definitely have given it 
I think two or three more episodes for Davy's mum and her relationship to sort of come to a proper end because at the end it just seemed like that one conversation and the spreading of the ashes just solves everything. Because the show is a comedy, um, it's fine if there isn't a very emotional or serious side, but then they also have the emotional and serious side. I mean, there were some moments where even I got a bit teary-eyed because of her dead father and like all the things you say to your parents. So because the show showed this emotional and serious side, I would expect the real life scenarios to also be more believable and realistic. But some of the stuff, like I said before, didn't seem as realistic. For example, towards the end when uh, Davy's mother says that we're going to India and Davy's of course very against it, she runs away to Ben's house. But Ben is a white dude living in a house all by himself. There is no way that an Indian mother would let their child just go and live with a white dude for like a few days. She would have definitely gone and brought him back. So just things like that. I just feel like it wasn't shown very realistically or how an actual person would approach it. But yeah, everything else, uh, I absolutely love. Plenty of relatable moments, laugh out loud moments. Um, overall, the acting was great and all the inclusion of TikTok really diving into that millennial mindset. I personally think that I'm not the target demographic for this show because I'm 23 and this is definitely a show intended for teens. I think if I was under 18, I would have probably loved this show because I think when I was a teenager, I was watching things like One Tree Hill and the OC and stuff like that. So overall, I would probably give this show a seven out of 10 from my perspective. However, I think it's a great show for teens, um, especially with the lead character being a brown girl. I think they should definitely make more seasons. Would I watch them? Probably not, just because I'm not a teenager going through that high school phase. So I like watching things that I can relate to. But it's definitely a show that you can still enjoy if you like that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's my review of Never Have I Ever. Let me know in the comments what you guys thought of the show, um, who your favourite character was. I actually personally think my favourite character was the English teacher. Just because I loved enthusiastic teachers and just some of the jokes. I just love those kind of people. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this week's video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel for weekly content. Also follow me on Instagram, I post things there too and I will see you in my next video. So until then, take care.